This is Michael T. Bradley. Welcome back to Realms Remembered. So let's dig into the Symbius stuff. We have quite a bit, and as I uh, mentioned before, this really felt to me like it should have been before Return of the Archwizard, so that's my bad. But hey, it worked out really nicely so that 2nd Edition ended on episode 26 or 25, and that was cool, right? <laughs> so Halls of Stormweather is the first book in the series, and that kind of kicks off all of the spin-offs because it, it it handles all of the different all, all the different characters get their own short story and then they spin off into novels all except one oddly enough let's talk about a few of them but most of them I will talk about when I get to the actual books so the heir of his Kaelwyn by Paul S Kemp I have to bring it up early simply because we've already talked about that book the short story here is fun and enjoyable, and I realized when I read it that it has to take place before Shadow's Witness, because in this book, Erebus finds out that Jack, his harper friend, or his halfling friend, is a harper, and obviously in Shadow's Witness, he already knows this, so whoops. Ah, uh, well, in any case, it's a fun little action-adventure story. Interesting. Nothing amazing, but it's fun, reads fast, it's great. Clayton Emery writes the one brother who doesn't get his own novel. He's just kind of this rich kid who there's not much about him. You know, it's just kind of whatever. I, I just really felt nothing for that. Ed Greenwood writes the story about Thamelon or Thalamon. I, I can never remember. It's like it, I kept wanting it to say one way and it was the wrong way. And now I can't remember which one is correct. Thamelon or Thalamon. He does this weird kind of at the Adams Family movie plot about, like, somebody who's the long-lost brother come back, and they're actually in it to try to steal the money from the Uskeverans, and hijinks ensue. I, it just really wasn't very engaging. Thamelon seems like he could be an interesting character, however, no matter how his name might be spelled. Richard Lee Byers. Very surprised, and happily so, that I really enjoyed his short story about Shamu, the wife, um... Also, the name of a killer whale, uh, Shamu. The wife, the, the story involving her in which uh, the daughter, uh, whose name is totally escaping me now, uh, but the daughter, who's also a thief, plays heavily. Really enjoyed that story. It's it's very Lovecraftian. It, it's a, like a they go to an opera and it becomes haunted and they have to go through all of these kind of twisty vine places and figure out what's going on and save the day. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Really fun little short story. And, uh, you know, some hints as to what's going on with Shamu and her past. And then, since I talked about that short story and we're going to talk about that book, I'll just lead right into it. The Shattered Mask by Richard Lee Byers again. The full novel. So, here's the thing. In the Cthulian short story, we get little glimpses of her past because, you know, that's the kind of point of the opera is it's, it's making you see the past and the future. She has a glimpse of herself in uh, the woods, essentially starting a duel with Thamelon, saying, you know, I know now. I, I know this thing that you've kept hidden from me, and I'm going to kill you. Well, that's the scene that the Shattered Mask starts out with, and it's like, okay, cool, we finally get to figure this out. But essentially, you know that Thamelon's getting his own book, <laughs> and you know that he's not a bad guy from what we've seen so far, so you kind of know it's a trick, and then essentially we go back and we show, oh, it's a trick, and then we show exactly how the trick was played out. And then we get, I, it, it's, it's, I can't remember exactly what order it all came in, but we get... After we really already know anything that we need to know, all this stuff gets filled in where it's like, well, I, I don't care about that. I want to know if she kills Thamelon, which doesn't make any sense. But, you know, maybe his book is a prologue story or maybe his book is him as a lich leading the house now. Who knows? But no, it, she doesn't kill him. And so, you know, it, they, they figure out, ah, oh, it must have been this. And then they talk about what it was that we just saw explained as to what caused this to happen and so they investigate it and it just it's it's it repeats itself so much that it could have essentially been this really good 80 page book and instead it's like a 300 page book with over half filler some of the bits in it are really fun like seeing the whole family kind of uh come together and uh work together in the ways that they're all doing different things i thought was fun you know i i found it interesting your mileage may vary <laughs> A decent book overall, you know, I mean, about 50% skimmable, but some really good beats in there, um, and, and I enjoyed it. Shamu's backstory is incredibly com convoluted, way over complex for God only knows what reason. Um, I almost kind of wish, you know, it, it's fun, and I, I, it probably ties into the main plot somehow. I don't even remember, like, who it is that's trying to bring them down. That's how forgettable and MacGuffin-y it was, but I almost kind of wish that he had just played it straight, that this was 
just a couple that had fallen out of love. I think that might have been more interesting. And seeing Thamelon kind of go along with it and be like, man, I've been, like, sleeping with and sharing my secrets with an imposter for my entire marriage, yet he just pretty quickly goes along with it. I, It made me really like his character and become interested in him. And that was kind of my main problem with this book, is I don't remember Jack about Shamu except her past, uh, the other characters, it really made me intrigued by them. So I guess it, it, it kind of worked on levels that it wasn't supposed to, yet the main level I think it was trying for failed. But does that make it a failure overall? I don't know. Uh, still, as I say, I enjoyed it. Next one, Dave Gross, uh, whose Pathfinder work I really, really enjoyed. It's about werewolves. Writes a short story and book about a werewolf. I'm trying to remember his name. It's not Thamelon, that's Deuce, uh, the one that Clayton Emery wrote a story about. But again, I'm totally blanking on his name. Anyway, he's, uh, you know, in the short story, finds out he's a werewolf and this kind of interferes with things. He's very much a rogue. Uh, he, he reminds me a lot of Nikolai Dante from 2000 AD, and he enjoys acting. Both of them are just fun. The book goes on too long. It, it's really, it felt like in a lot of ways, most of these people wrote a really good short story and then thought of a sequel short story and were told, oh, but it has to be a book. And it's like, oh crap. Even Paul Kemp's, which, you know, I, I gush and gush about Paul Kemp's, but Shadow's Witness really did not feel book length to me. So Black Wolf, I think it, 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 the main reason it suffers is because it has about 7,000 characters. There's one character I absolutely loved, and it's it's been a while since I read it, so I apologize. I'm totally blanking on names here. But there's this one character who is essentially in the thrall of some evil creature through most of it, and keeps kind of showing through these little moments of decency even though he is essentially a coward and in the end it's like everybody hates him and the woman who he's kind of done everything for through the entire book is disgusted by him i thought that was brilliant this character's arc was by far the most interesting thing about the entire book i mean it made you kind of hate all of the main characters because it's like god everything just comes so easily to them there's another character uh tam i want to say his name's tam maybe it's tamlin tam psych we're just gonna go with that so the main character is a wolf we're going to nickname him Tamlin, whether that's his name or not. He has a, a sidekick. Really enjoy the sidekick as well. He's not funny, and he's meant to be comic relief, but it seems like his kind of really bad humor and trying to uh, make the best of any situation he's in, it seems like there's a lot going on there. And I was kind of glad that they didn't show his backstory, because I'm assuming it would just be horrible and not necessarily interesting. But you could read a lot between the lines and be like, oh, you know, this guy was probably molested by his parents and his uh, really horrible humor is his coping mechanism whenever he's stressed. Very interesting character. I think he lives. Yeah, there are too many duplicate characters in this. Like, there's this swordsman who's amazing and possibly the brother? I, I can't remember. One of them's like a brother <laughs> and one of them's not. Uh, but there's this other character who's just essentially the same character but part of the werewolf tribe and uh, one of them was this evil creature's brother and one of them just worked with him and I couldn't keep them straight and I think both their names began with R. It felt like there could be a lot of compressing in the book. There's also furry sex so for those of you who are into that you know uh, werewolves are of course like the best most accepted furry porn out there, I think. You, you can get mainstream furry porn if you just call it werewolves. So there's that. Yay. Not really much else to say about this book. I, I guess this kind of the the failing, I don't want to call it a failing, the shortcoming, let's put it that way, of, of these books overall is that these characters were pretty interesting for a short story each. They don't really hold up for an entire book. Erebus Kale, <laughs> I'm really excited about his trilogy. I actually even started reading it at first because if you'll notice the, the page that I'm using for the order of this puts it well before some of the other books, but I read it and the first few pages are like, Tazzy was doing this, which she's not at the time of uh, reading her short story, and Thamelon uh, is, is dead. And so it's like, well, what? <laughs> so obviously Twilight Falling must start after all of the other books. Unless that opening was a dream sequence or something, but that would seem weird and random. So, I, I'm going to have to wait to start those until after I finish all of the Sembia books, which is fine, uh, because that puts them all together. I'll just talk about those for now. Uh, next time, Sands of the Soul and Heirs of Prophecy. All right, thanks for joining me. This is Michael T. Bradley, Realms Remembered.